Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is Happy Everything Day. It is our wrap up. I've got my border on. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the border. I have my just just a bunch of stuff that I've been doing over the last few days. I'm going to talk about show you those. We'll have the Valentine sew along. Talk about that towards the end. So first, I'm not going to put the Happy Everything up on the wall because. I want to work on this and I thought okay I'll just hold it up and then later I'll get a picture and put it on my website so it'll be on my website today but here is mine with the border on ta-da I am very excited about this I love it and when I here in a second I'll tell you how I decided on the width of my border on the gray how much gray I wanted to have so done well at least it's a flimsy it's a top it's a flimsy now so be sure that you have shared your happy everything top even if you don't have the border on yet show it because i'm going to do another parade of quilts i've been collecting pictures i already did one on a video a couple days ago i think i don't know what day it was uh and i'll do another one because a bunch of you are finishing up so keep showing your pictures over the next few days so i can get a few more of them okay what about my ufo list I am rocking this UFO list. I am just killing it. Okay, I want to show you. Check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. All I have left is the Montana mittens. <laughs> Where are they? They're over here somewhere. Oh, here they are. So here's the kit that I got from Kate at the Confidence Stitch, who is in Montana. Uh, she's near in the town near where my mom lives. So. I've got to get these started. I have, what, a week till the end of the month of January. No problem, she says. Maybe tomorrow I will get this opened on the video and look at the pattern and decide what to do. But if you notice there was a check mark for the binding is done on the spooky sampler. Here it is, here it is. I showed you a picture on Facebook of me sewing the binding and a picture on here at YouTube at the community tab. So hopefully you're looking at that because I'm sharing things there. So here it is all quilted and the quilting on it has spiders and moons and little bats. And I use the same binding that Melissa Mortis and the, of um, the, was it pink polka dot chair is her website but this is her fabric and kit from uh, riley blake that we sewed together and a lot of you sewed your own version you know you bought the pattern and you sewed with your own fabric but i love the stripes 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 everything stripes uh the backing i got was her from her fabric line too because it is so darn cute here you can see a good spider on that gray and the spider web and then there's little bats in some of the places. Let me see, was there a bat? Yeah, here it is by the broom. There's a bat. So darling. So that is done. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. I might, it might be a gift. I have uh, someone who loves a lot of Halloween things. And so I think that's where this one is going to go. This look border decision making, size decision making. To figure out the size border I want on the Happy Everything, it's kind of a visual thing for me. I don't really go for measurements because, you know, you may want a wider border. Maybe on a particular quilt, if you're putting it on the bed and you just want the top to be sort of your patchwork design and then the border to be all the hangover, proportionally the border will be quite wide if you were to hang it up and look at it. But when it's on the bed, it's perfect. So the Happy Everything will be a wall hanging. And that means that I don't need an extra wide border on it. Although there are things that I do have that. You think about the Liberty uh, box quilt. I'll just pop this picture up here. That has an extra, extra, extra wide border on it. The border is kind of like the big feature. That's a different concept than this guy. So I'm probably looking at a three to four inch border. Four is probably too big because I don't want it to overpower the center, particularly the gray is darker than a lot of the grays in the quilt. So let's take a look. So I have it down here and I've just put the border fabric out so that I could take a look at it. I have got a ruler and I will lay it down here. I've already had it up on the wall, which is really the best way. And I knew that 
um, probably about three to four inches would be good. So I just take my ruler, and right now this is four inches. So, hmm, if I cut it four inches, then it's basically like three and a quarter when it's finished. So there, I'm just, and of course this yellow will go in a fourth of an inch more for the seam allowance of what I'm sewing it to. So that will be about like this. Uh, that quarter inch doesn't visually eat up a lot of space when I'm looking. So there is a four inch. So what if I did like three and a half? So here would be three and a half. And that gives me just a little bit more narrow border. Uh, I will also do the binding in this same color because I don't want to break up the look of it. Often I do binding in a different, like maybe this inner border, I would repeat out here. But it's, if I do three and a half, which means I'll cut it three and three fourths, uh, then uh, the yellow would overpower it. I want it to just frame it, like a picture frame, you know, so I want that. So I think I'm going to do this size. Oh, the four was nice though, but I think it's just a little bit too, uh, I think I'll go, that's just that, take off this that little bit. So I'll cut these strips three and three fourths and then add them to the quilt. I will cut all four borders on the length of the fabric because I have enough fabric to do the sides without any piecing, which is fabulous. So I will do the top and the bottom at the same. That way I don't chop off any of the end because if I were to go, oh, okay, this, this uh, is enough to do the top, let's say it were, and I started chopping off, well, if I was kind of close on the length, I've now lost length. So I want to do everything on the length of the border for all four of them. So I will cut a strip that's uh, the, two, the two longer strips, and then we'll cut the two shorter strips. That way I leave a piece left on here, and I'll show you what that looks like after I cut it. This um, length is, well, I could just fold it, you know, in half on the length, and then it's manageable to do it, to, trim, to cut it doubled like this. So that's what I'll do. Put it down on the cutting mat, you can see. So it's a little, it falls off the edge just a little bit. If I were to angle it, let me get this. So if I angle the piece corner to corner on my mat, I can sort of get that there, get it almost all on the mat, see? It's the power of the angle. So basically I'm doing three and three fourths inch so that it finishes three and a half and I don't want that salvage and I'll be doing uh, two of the two long strips so I'll just show you one I'll just cut one here out of this fabric and I'm over I'm going to go back and trim it afterwards so I'm past that white salvage edge to so this particular one So here's the one piece, and then I need to trim it. So normally I would not flop it open like that to show you because I need to trim off the other side. So I want to be sure to line it up. Okay, three and three fourths. So got to get that, get that lined up. That's, and then I will be trimming the whole way along just to get rid of the white part there. So here, whoops, get that. So now I have one side border. And what I will do is cut the other side border, just like this, and then I will cut the top and the bottom border. So I'll be sewing the top and the bottom border first, and then the side borders. I like to do it that way uh, when my fabric works out, so I don't have to piece it, because the visual of having one full border top to bottom elongates the quilt visually. It's just a little thing, and I like the way that effect works out. Okay, time to get the other three cut. Here is after the top and bottom borders are cut. So I actually have this much to be sure I had enough. So now I have this beautiful piece left, which I could, which I will cut my binding out of, and then I can either save this for maybe another project, or I could decide to piece it into the backing. 
The borders are all sewn on. Yay! Have them. I know I'm on the back side here, but you saw it when I first started. So, and if you go to my website, I have a picture of it too. So there's the borders and the binding is cut. So I will sew that up and press it. Uh, and they'll be, then I'll wrap it and put it in the basket in my credenza. Now, what did I have left from scraps on that? Uh, backing. I got four two and a half inch squares, which is the primary thing that I'm cutting and keeping until I sew up all those crumb blocks from 2021. So I'm not going to make more crumb blocks now, maybe someday, <laughs> but this is what I'm cutting off. And then I had this little bit here. So that's not, that's, that's pretty darn good. Oh, then this, the salvage edge, the white edge here. So that's, that's done. Oh, then there was Oh, oh, <laughs> this is my bag of small scraps. So I'm keeping one bag of very small scraps that I'm not sewing together. And just going to probably gift this to somebody who really uses these or wants some variety, a different variety, uh, because I'm not going to sew those up. First, a mail call. This is from Judy, and she is on our YouTube chat. So, hi, Judy. You can get to that YouTube chat uh, when it runs in the morning at 7 a.m. So come join us. So she sent me this wonderful card. It's a quilting card. It's from a lady who does calls, ca cards called the Sisterhood of Quilters. Look at that. And she sent me... <laughs> a cookie cutter of a sewing machine, a featherweight, no less. Yes, and a black one, <laughs> black featherweight, classic. I love it. Look at them all iced up on there. Thank you, Mwah. Judy, you're the best. Okay, we're gonna do angel food cake, Valentine's sew along. So here is a picture of my angel food cake. Uh, I had some the other day. We had strawberries and made it all yummy. It's been really good. It's gone. <laughs> so the pattern was for Sweet Dreams, our block number three, the Angel Food Cake block. And I gave you a layout, and this layout will be a 40 by 40 quilt. Now, of course, if you wanna make a lap quilt, you just keep making blocks, and you could make like four times of this. It'd be then 80 by 80. Uh, which would be pretty big, or you could just add like two more rows and then two more rows, you know, that kind of a thing, or two and four to get whatever size you want. So here's the layout. Now I did that block with my scraps, because remember I did the first two blocks of Sweet Dreams with the scraps, and this is what I did. And I found some chicken fabric for all you chicken lovers out there. <laughs> we were talking about loving chickens the other day, and I thought, okay, I came across this when I was looking for a light, and I found the chickens. Now the scraps are the alternate strips. So I alternated them with red, which kind of makes it pop. This particular block, scrap block, was probably the least favorite one I made. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, it has to be cut up. And it turns out wonderful like this. Now for the uh, Angel Food Cake Valentine's Sew Along, I am using this layer cake here, which I showed you the other day. And I'm gonna show you again. Because I'm going to have a light background, which is this, uh, and it's a different white, you can see it here, it's, it's, a diff it's more white and this is more yellowy, creamy color. I'm not going to use in my hearts here any of the lights. So I will just basically pull all those out and then I will do my quilt from the other the other parts. So I've got pinks and peaches and I would do all the hearts first. And I'm going to audition and you're going to see me making this over the next few days. You know, as I make stuff, I will show it and then we'll talk about it every Monday for the next couple Mondays. Uh, but I want to, I think I want to intersperse the purples and then maybe make the border also just of the variety of colors. I can't decide, but I'm thinking if I just did purple on the outside, it's not going to look as nice with no, there'd be no purple in the inside. So I think it needs to have it just mixed up the whole way. So that, and there's a link below to this fabric line It's called Sincerely Yours by my friends, uh, Chelsea and uh, her mom, uh, Sherry. Okay. But what if you're going to just go in your stash? You can pull all kinds of fun things. I've got, 
because this is not a big quilt. Oh, so I've got the pink, my pink bucket here. So if I was going to do pink, then, then I would pretty much go through and look for, there's how many strips? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six strips on the heart, but you don't have, you know, you could, you could just do like 12 strips and just start mixing it all up and picking things that you like. Maybe things that have some contrast you know, I mean, some um, pattern and then low volume or, you know, less pattern. You could also pop in, ah, see, look at this. Got to put the candy in there. You, depending on what your lights are, you could add some lights, but you don't want that to blend into your background too much. Here's one that I have with the windows on it. Now that would get chopped up too much. So I probably wouldn't do that. But here's a beautiful one that I was sent from Australia. So that would be really pretty in there. But just, I think I would end up alternating it more so that the hearts, so that, you, so that you'd have pattern and then less pattern, pattern, less pattern. And that's just kind of how I like to do it, which is the same effect that you see here. Because the red is kind of like the less pattern and then you've got the scrappy pieces. Now also look around because you may just have a bundle of something really good that you haven't used for a while. Like I was looking around and I had collected, uh, collected, I had gotten, <laughs> I guess it was collected, a few bundles of Tilda fabric a while back. And these would be really, really pretty. Now if you happen to have some Liberty of London fabric, wouldn't that be gorgeous? Like this reminds me of Liberty of London fabric. Uh, so the Tilda fabric, she always has different fabric lines. I'll link you to um, some at the website. You could also, of course, do red. There's, you know, a variety, variety of colors <laughs> that you could do for this. But we want to get going. Where's the pattern? You want to get going today. Get your fabric pulled. Show it in the group. Come and show your fabric that you're going to use. If you, a couple people have already made one, seriously. You can do a different kind of border if you don't want to do those half square triangles. Just make the hearts and put a fabric border. If you have a really pretty fabric that you've kind of been saving and you want to use, get that out and do it. All right, so this is the kickoff of the Valentine Sew Along. Okay, the last thing I want to wrap up today is the quilt vault. I spent the last three days basically refolding all the quilts. Ah, it was it was a lot. I did a little bit and then did a little bit and then I'm like, okay, on Saturday I was like, this is it. I am just going to refold all of them, get them all tidy because I can't, I was on decision overload. I could not really think I needed to just make them look tidy and that would make me sort of have a nice space to look at um, even though it's a storage space. So I'm going to show you a little before here and then I'll show you the after. So besides in the dining room, I put bookcases and look, I put up the monthly markings up on the top while well, Greg hung it up. <laughs> He's more patient than me to get it up there. So this is also quilt storage. These here are sort of things that are going to family members or kind of a staging shelf at one right now. Everything from there over are kind of important quilts or there's some there that need those right there, they need to be binding. They just came back, I have to show you those. But down below is some business storage. So this is, uh, through the years we off and on have storage here. And that's just the way life is. And then the dining room. So now I've got that stack folded tidy and I'm taking all of this off today, this afternoon. You know, I worked all morning on this side getting it refolded. Uh, basically, I know there's probably these two shells will be donated eventually. And then there's a back layer, just atop of the bookcase. But these are also, some of these are fairly important quilts that'll go on the shelves out in the hallway. So I wanna get those out of here and work on them. Then there's some small stacks I need to deal with. They're like pillowcases and little table runners. I need to figure out how to, where to put those. And you've already seen these guys. So these, these two stacks are there waiting for me, waiting for me. <laughs> so this is my life, the life of a quilt designer who has too many quilts. So here's where it ended up. I have all the shelves organized, mostly 
what you see here on these two shelves are quilts from books. So they're almost all book quilts. And behind these two, which has the table, are quilts I don't get to quite as often. Of course, that makes sense, right? And then I have quilts here that are mostly from fabric lines. Then I have fabric wide backs, new fabric coming out, and then other quilts of mine. These are sort of seasonal, some of them. Plus over here, which is not really that organized, these are a bunch of things that will go to charity. Uh, these are smalls. They're all table runners or very small quilts. Down here are all my winter quilts. And now I'm able to walk through here, which is fabulous. I still have, these are like pillows and some other table runners. I still have to go through that. These are some supplies and some other smalls. I have lots and lots of small projects, so those have to be gone through. And now we'll take a walk out to the, to the bookcases. Let's go to the bookcases again. And they are done. For now, this is all that's going on the bookcases. So I have space, as my friend pointed out. You have space! <laughs> There's another whole shelf up there that doesn't have anything in it. So there is a tour of the work that I've been doing over the last few days to get everything organized. I'm super excited that so so happy. I keep Greg telling Greg, do you want a tour? Do you want a tour of my quilts? <laughs> Very happy. So what do you think? I've been just like, oh, I just have to go in and sit and look and say, okay, I got it done. That was a lot, a lot of work. I touched practically every quilt I owned in the last few days. You know, there's quilts on the wall. Uh, and of course I've given quilts away now, probably at least a hundred, if not a bit more than that. But I've touched, I touched practically everything. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, okay, now I kind of know again where everything is and what I have. And it just feels really good to have that. So I'm so excited you're here today. Share pictures of your happy everything as you get the top done. We've got to see those flimsies and get, whoops, and get started on your <laughs> angel food cake. All right. I love you. Mwah. See you online.